So some of you might have noticed in an early video this year, there was a bunch of film that arrived at the house, and in that box was a bunch of instant film. All these years shooting instant film, and I think that the only other time I remember purchasing black and white, like integral film, film that's gonna be, you know, for an SX-70 or a 600 style camera, uh, the only other time I remember doing that was when The Impossible Project first started and they launched with a black and white film, and they have come a long way since then in the new black and white emulsion, I'll just say that. I've talked about it before, but I think it's like the nostalgia for me thinking of, you know, Polaroid film, especially growing up, I think of color inside of that little frame. And I'm also always shooting black and white roll film, and so instant film in general, that's always been sort of a, like, a way to scratch that color itch that my roll film normally wouldn't. However, I thought it would be fun to just buy a few packs and shoot it and see how it made me shoot any different differently. Um, you know, with color film and SX-70, this kind of camera, getting really close and filling the frame, um, I wanted to see if black and white would make me shoot any differently because I definitely have color in mind when I typically pick up that camera. So I just wanted to try it out and have some fun and start the conversation with you guys. So thank you all for joining me today and a huge thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a website, be sure to go to squarespace.com slash Matt Day, but we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Let's, uh, let's talk about these Polaroids. I do want to mention all of the photos were shot with the SX-70, although this is technically the Mint SLR 670S. It's a modified SX-70 that has this attachment on top. Um, I've done videos about this and I've used it in plenty of different videos before if you haven't seen it, um, but basically it's just going to give you a shutter speed dial on top of the camera giving you actual shutter speed control or you can use auto 600 or auto 100. So that is the bonus. You can use 100 speed or 600 speed if you're gonna be uh, controlling your shutter speed manually, but you do also have that auto feature, which I actually use most of the time because sticking to the 600 speed film, letting me shoot in lower light or just shoot with faster shutter speeds than I typically would, um, that's what I love about it. So a couple of these packs I burnt through way too quickly. I didn't really mean to, but I was in the driveway with the family and the kids were just riding their scooters around and then they got the hose out and were chasing each other with the hose. Don't make me get the hose. Hello. Normally in a situation like this, I would grab the X100 or my M6 or any other camera than an instant film camera because I'm not gonna be shooting the same scene or the same subject over and over typically when I'm shooting Polaroids just due to the cost of every frame. But I do think shooting black and white and just shooting in a setting like that Black and white, thinking about how the end result might look, I felt like I was shooting differently and that I was shooting much more into the light and I was experimenting a lot more because I wasn't as concerned with losing, you know, shadow detail or anything. With Polaroid color film, when the shadows, you know, lose detail, things can get really muddy. On top of that, when things blow out, sometimes the color can look kind of just gross. But with the black and white, not worrying so much about getting those ugly color shifts that would just, you know, sometimes break and otherwise good photo, um, I tried to just lean into that and so I was shooting into the light and shooting with different reflections and silhouettes and just trying to have fun and shoot different things and also see how the film would handle that much contrast. Shooting into the light and kind of lining up the way the sun was hitting the water there, I was shooting really directly into that reflection so it was really really harsh light. I was pretty surprised at how well that held up. Um, it's not like a negative or something that you're going to be enlarging in the dark room and doing any kind of work with, uh, it, for the most part, what you see is what you get. Of course, if I scan it and do different things, I could tweak it there, but just holding the Polaroids out, you know, in front of you, like you're meant to, looking at them this way, uh, they really do have a really nice look to them. But getting in that mindset and just shooting a lot more freely, I was just burning through the film, and I ended up just having a stack of Polaroids sitting on the back of the mower in the driveway, and uh, forgot about them, and then an hour later, Molly brought them to me, and I think that might be what the issue is with a couple of these. They have sort of like this brown, um, it almost looks like a burnt edge at the top of the frame. And it's, you know, it's an imperfection. It's not something I was expecting or planning. And yeah, it definitely does stand out when you're looking at a black and white frame and you have this little orange brown line at the top of it. But at the same time, I love it. And I also like just the weird unexpected stuff with instant film. That's a big part of the fun with it for me. 
to be honest, I just expected this film to be a lot more contrasty. I didn't realize it would have so much detail all across the board. Um, it's been a long time since I've shot this film, so maybe that has something to do with it, but overall, it was a lot more like stable and forgiving than I was expecting. And I do still have one pack, and I think I would like to go out and just, you know, go and see what I could do with that one pack and just show all eight photos. Uh, maybe just take you guys along for the day as I look to shoot that last pack. If this video, you know, is interesting and if that sounds like something you'd want to watch, let me know and we'll make it happen soon. If I shoot this pack before that video happens, which very well could happen, I'll buy more. Just let me know if you want to see that video. I did also shoot some photos here in the office with the kids. Just wanted to get a couple quick portraits of the kids, nice and close up, and then I ended up getting a couple of them together, and all of them came out a little bit more underexposed than I was hoping. Well, I was hoping none of them were gonna be really underexposed, but it's just, these were all shot within like 60 to 90 seconds because that's how quick you have to be with the kids these days. Uh, but I would like to do more stuff like that with this camera in the studio because I've done it a couple of times just working with, you know, controlled lighting and actually taking my time with it. And I wanna do more of that as well. So hopefully soon, Molly and I, we've talked about doing some photos like different Polaroids around the house, just utilizing the natural light. Um, that would be a lot of fun as well. So that's another one. If you you want to see it let me know as a matter of fact speaking of polaroids and black and white polaroids um fp 3000 b i'm down to my last two packs Nora's waiting on me. <laughs> I'm down to my last two packs of FP3000B. I shot another pack recently and had a lot of fun and it made me realize I want to share that whole experience. Um, so I'm going to make a video as I shoot my last pack of the film. It's one of my favorite films of all time. I know I was just talking about how I always shoot color with uh, Polaroid integral film, but the peel apart film FP3000B, it's always been one of my favorites and uh, I'm excited to share that last pack with you guys. With that video, the other videos I mentioned with Polaroids, I am always down for the Polaroid content. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, let me know. Um, watch the videos, like them, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I appreciate all of you guys so much watching these videos and uh, just enjoying photography with me. If you want to see more stuff, there's plenty of other videos on the channel and more to come. Um, yeah, I love you guys very much. Thank you so much for the support and a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring the channel and helping me do everything we do here. When I needed to build a site for mattdayphoto.com, I did that with Squarespace long before they ever sponsored the channel because they really are the best all-in-one platform to build a website. Someone like me, I don't have any kind of experience in building a website and I need things to be simple. If I need to update things or change things, I want to be able to do it myself and I want to be able to do it quickly and not have to take a course to learn how to do it. And Squarespace is super easy with all of their templates. You can pick a template, have a great starting point to work from, but then you can further customize that to fit your own style. Obviously, as photographers, having a gallery to showcase your work is crucial, but not only that, you can do other things like have an online store to sell prints or digital products, regularly update things with a blog, send out an email newsletter. People can even schedule or make appointments directly through the site. All of this stuff is built right into Squarespace and it's incredibly easy to use. If you do have questions or need help with anything, they're always ready with 24-7 award-winning customer service. So no more putting it off. It's time to make the website happen that you've been thinking about. Go to squarespace.com slash mattday. That'll get you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for all of their support on this channel. And thank you all for watching. I love you all, and I'll see you soon.